All right, guys, we're here. So you're thinking about restarting your island in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And you may be wondering, why would I ever do this? Or maybe you're wondering, why do I feel this way? And why do I want to restart my island in Animal Crossing? So a lot of people in our community and on Twitter have been contemplating the idea of restarting their islands, point blank. Now, the first question you may ask is, why would you want to do this? A lot of people may be experiencing something that we just call burnout. Kind of with the current situation of the world, a lot of us have been given just a lot more time to play games. And like myself, that time has probably been playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. And if you're to the point to where you love the game, but barely have the desire to like even log in anymore and do like your dailies and things of that nature, then this could be a good indication that restarting your island may not be a bad idea. Now, on the other hand, you may be what we call done with your island. Uh, maybe your island is what you would call perfect. Maybe it's to the exact design that you wanted. Maybe when you started your island, you're like, I'm gonna do it just like this. And now when you log in and you go into your island, it's to the exact perfect image that you wanted. Everything's where it should be. Doing your dailies and chatting with your villagers just doesn't hold the same luster as maybe it did before. And maybe you're even like me and your island has all of the perfect villagers you've been searching for. And now that the hunt for those perfect dreamy villagers is over, what else is there left to do? All, basically like all in all, at the end of the day, right? There might be dozens of reasons for feeling like a fresh start may be the exact thing you need to feel like that first day that you logged into the game. So if you clicked on this video, then it, probably was already decided that you are gonna be restarting your island. And now that you're here with us, we wanna make sure that you have a better experience than you did the first time. No matter what the reason is that got you here, this time we wanna make sure that all of your ducks are lined up in a row. And that way you have a much better island life experience and a much better restart this time around. What are the things you need to know before picking your island and going on your next island adventure. First off, Timmy and Tommy, when the game opens, will present you with four maps. Now, these four maps can be drastically different, and right off the bat, if you hate all of them, that's okay. With terraforming, you can basically change the design of your island to make it anything you want. So, what we're gonna focus on are the things that you simply can't change. And the first thing you can't change is where your residence services is located. On a personal note, the position of my residence services on my first island, I absolutely hated it. And I wish that I could change. So make sure that when you are presented those first four islands, or whether you're resetting a bunch of times just to get the perfect island layout, that this is one of the very first things that you look at and make sure that it's in the ideal position based off a rough idea of what you're going to want your future island to look like. This also comes in relation to the airport. So to stretch your creative muscles, make sure it falls in line with it being in that perfect position, whether that's directly off-centered, left, right, whatever you think your ideal position is going to be for the airport, make sure that airport and resident services are exactly where you want them to be. The next big important thing, which you can see from the four map choices, is the location of your rivers. Now, you can always change this with terraforming, but you won't be able to change where the river connects to the ocean. So again, make sure that whether they are symmetrical or they are just in the ideal spot for your future island, that you take this into consideration as this can hinder your future designing for your perfect island. Now, next on the list, on our road to a perfect island reset is the position of our secret beach. 
By this time in the game, I'm sure you have seen red dozens of times. And like myself, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you weren't ready for when we learned that the secret beach is how he would be coming onto our islands. So now that this time we are prepared, go ahead and check out the secret beach location and make sure that it's something that you are going to be happy with. The next thing that comes into play is the position of your rocks. Yes, the rocks. Maybe you have never really done anything with the rocks on your current island, but if you're like me, you have seen dozens of islands with cool restaurants, cafes, spas, band areas, and a bunch of other stuff on the rock formations. So go ahead and peep out the rocks and make sure it's something you will be happy with long term. At this point, you may have actually had to pick your island to see it in person as the map doesn't really represent what your rock formations are going to look like. These rocks are going to come in all kinds of crazy shapes and sizes, so make sure that the formations are to your ideal picture that you have for your island. Okay, sticking close with island formations, another thing that we cannot change is the peninsula or that piece of the island that sticks out. It is a spot to where a lot of us will be putting like a lighthouse in. Well, this is going to be one of those things that comes in a couple of shapes. So you're going to want to make sure that you check it out in person to ensure that it's something you can work with. Last thing you want is a piece of unterraformable land that you can never fit into your perfect island design. It's something that you probably didn't think of the first time around, but again, now that you're resetting, this needs to be perfect. And those do come in a couple of different shapes. So again, just make sure that when you're choosing the quote unquote perfect island, that it also fits in what your future island could be. This now brings me to the most important thing, in my opinion, and that's the color of your airport. When I first logged into the game, it took me literal weeks to even know that mine was green. I'm not even joking. And although green is, it's a pretty cool color, there was nothing I wanted more than blue or yellow. And honestly, I would have even taken orange at this point. On top of just colors, the airport is actually super significant because it actually determines a ton of background things you would have never even guessed. I'll talk about that honestly in one second, but aesthetically, this is one thing that you have to think of as well, because obviously you're gonna have to look at it a lot. You're gonna be inviting people. You're gonna see it all the time. Every time you go to a mystery island, you're gonna be seeing the airport a lot. So just aesthetics wise, make sure that it's your ideal color that again will fit into what your future island should or you want it to look like. Now, just in case you're wondering, the airports come in a few different colors. They come in green, blue, yellow, and orange. So if color is all you care about, then again, just make sure that you take the time to get the perfect color on the outside. That way it fits your island aesthetic. But more so than that, it also determines your items. Now, these items are gonna be the ones that are gonna be your Nook Miles shopping store. Now, this is where you can turn in your Nook Miles for exclusive items. So let's talk about which each of these airports will give you the specific items in correlation to their colors. All right, first off is the blue airport. The blue airport is going to give you the green lamppost, the utility pole with stickers and ads, the gray snack machine, the bronze clock, the black solar panel, the white and red turbine, the red Godzilla, the black and white and red teacup ride. The green airport is going to give you the black street lamp, utility pole with no ads or stickers, the red snack machine, the white clock, the blue solar panel, the blue and white turbine, the blue Godzilla, and the pastel colored teacups. The orange airport is going to give you the white street lamp, the utility pole with stickers and ads, the white snack machine, the gray clock, the black solar panel, the white and red turbine, the brown Godzilla, and the blue, green, and red teacup ride. The yellow airport is going to give you the bronze street lamp, the utility pole with no stickers or ads, the black snack machine, the black clock, the blue solar panel, the blue and white turbine, the black Godzilla, the bright red colored red, blue and green teacup ride. 
So as you guys can see, there's a lot of things that come into play when making our decisions for what island we're going to pick. And I bet you the first time that you logged into the game, you had no idea that you were making so many decisions at once when all you wanted to do was get in and play the game. But now you've been given the second chance in restarting your island, or you might just be restarting your second island on another Switch. Regardless of what the case is, these are just some things that you need to know. We have a couple more things to go over, so let's talk about them. All right, so the next thing is the flowers. Yes, we're going to be talking about flowers. Your rare spawn flowers won't be clearly visible, so you do have to actually log in to the island that you choose. But what you wanna do when you actually log into that island is kinda skip everything else they ask you to do and head directly for a cliff. Now, when you can see the cliff, you're gonna to wanna to position your camera to a point where you can see the flowers on the edge of said cliffs. You're gonna to wanna to ensure that your rare flower is one that you just want or that you can live with in the future, depending on how important native flowers are going to be to you. Again, the reality is you can get seed bags, you can always plant flowers, but when you're just starting off, these are gonna be the flowers that are going to be the most abundant in your island. And the last thing, okay, it's a lot, but the last thing is the fruit trees. And this one was super important to me. When I started, there was nothing more than I wanted outside of my airport than apple trees or peach trees. But ultimately, I got stuck with oranges. Yes, I know, who wants oranges? So unlike me, make sure that whatever you do, that your native fruit is something that you have always wanted. This time, when you are restarting, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the ideal native fruit, depending on how important that is to you. Now, with the fruits, you're gonna have the options of apples, oranges, peaches, pears, and cherries. And no matter what you guys hear out there on the internet, the question that Timmy and Tommy asked you in the beginning, whether you're gonna bring a sleeping bag, a lamp, those questions don't actually matter. These, all of these things I've gone over, including the trees, they are all randomized and they're always gonna continue to be randomized. You can pick whatever birthday you want. You can answer the question however you want. These things are gonna continue to be randomized. You're just gonna have to keep resetting till your ideal island is exactly how you want it. All right, guys, so that has, that's been everything. That's been all that I have. Now what I wanna do is I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know why you are restarting your island in the comments down below. Share any other tips that people need to know before they restart and to check out on how to pick a villager that you want after you are happy with your new island, click on this video on the screen right now and learn how to make sure that you are able to get all of the dreamy villagers that you want on your perfect restarted island. And guys, I've been Dom from the Game Looters. If you could do, grace me with a like hit the subscribe button and join our community and come into one of our live streams for Animal Crossing. I would love to see you there and we'll catch you guys on the next video.